Hello everyone and welcome to the first in this mini video series all about Azure. Thank you very much for tuning in. So we wanted to create these videos because we actually know from experience that the cloud can often feel like a really, really daunting subject. However, that actually doesn't need to be the case. Once you know what the cloud actually is all about and some of the fundamental services that can be used to support your cloud journeys, you'll actually see what an incredible business asset this actually is. So over the coming videos, we'll run through some of the key aspects of services of Microsoft Azure, such as Azure Policy, Microsoft PowerView, as well as some of the frameworks, and we'll highlight why cloud, and more specifically, why Azure, so that you can tackle it with confidence. Ultimately, the, the cloud is a, is a methodology, not a destination, which is something that we're actually going to cover and explore when we look at the cloud adoption framework together. But before we do that, let's explore why is cloud, and then why my Microsoft Azure? So first of all, why is cloud? Well, the easiest way to actually uh, describe it is to say that it's compute, storage, and networking, which is being delivered over the internet. So this could be resources such as standard virtual machines, like D-series VMs, which you could use to deliver your application. But Azure has actually grown much beyond those baseline resources as we're gonna be discovering together. So then the next question actually is, well, why Azure? Well, there's actually going to be many reasons why you'd want to do that, or why to choose Azure, but we're going to look at a few together now. So Azure is actually completely global. It has one of the biggest networks on the planet with over 175,000 miles of cabling, and it actually has more data centers than Google and AWS combined. So it means that you can choose to bring your applications closer to you and your clients to improve the overall performance, and you don't have to worry about the procuring hardware for each of those individual locations. Second reason we want to think about is that Azure is scalable. So these could apply to setting up resources, which can actually be done in minutes and hours, right the way to setting up infrastructure in new market regions to actually help meet your client demand. You can choose to be able to fully customize your service using virtual machines, which is known as infrastructure as a service, or have some of that management being handled by Microsoft, where actually you only need to focus on your application and the data being used. So that's actually being known as a platform as a service. Also, Azure is compliant. It has the most data centers, so actually managing data residency and regional compliance is a breeze. You can set up resources to stay in the region that you need and also apply different configurations and policies, such as allow resources to only be spun up in the UK South region, for example, or deploy Defender for Cloud if it doesn't already exist. That way you have the security in place. Azure is also future ready. And it's no big secret that Microsoft have actually made massive investments in AI over the last year alone with the introduction of OpenAI and their cognitive services in AI modeling. However, they're also focused on data as a whole. So for example, using services like Microsoft Fabric, you can analyze data stored elsewhere, such as on-prem or on AWS to generate insights without having to store that data for a second time. And many businesses have actually made or are making the jump to Azure to take advantage of these such benefits. However, if you specifically operate on-premise at the moment, well, the other big area that you might want to consider Azure for is actually reducing your technical debt for the hardware as well as the management liabilities such as electricity and actually the regular patching updates. Also, regarding cost optimization, Azure has specific levers that you can pull, such as reservation instances and savings plans, where you can actually reserve capacity or compute functions for either one or three years and get your discount. You can also bring your own Windows or SQL licenses to Azure, which is known as Azure Hybrid Benefits, which will actually reduce your licensing costs and actually your software debt when you're actually making that migration. So next time, we're going to consider some of the ways that Azure has supported customers, as well as some of the services that it has expanded into and also their uses.